Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you some tips and techniques on how to draw a beak on a parrot or any kind of bird you want really. They're just general kind of tips and techniques as to how you can get that kind of smooth kind of almost grainy looking texture even though it is kind of smooth. So we're going to walk through some of those tips. So we're going to start with the base layers. So when you are adding your very first layer to the beak, you want to make sure that you're working in the direction that you can see any of the grooves, any of those kind of lines that are running down the beak. They kind of follow the curvature of the beak if your particular bird has a curved beak. Um, but you want to follow the direction of the curvature of the beak, follow those lines and just add a very light layer all over. So I'm using a base of some warm grey one. I've just used very light pressure, added that base colour all over the top half of the beak here. And then what I'm doing is going in with the same colour and just adding in some of the darker aspects and areas of the beak um, according to my particular reference photo. So once I've done that, I then go in with my next darkest colour, which for me, I'm using a warm grey three, and then just go over those darkest areas again, making sure that I am shading, following the curvature of the beak, and just adding in any kind of really distinct lines with this tone. I'm applying a little bit of pressure here and there as well, where there are some slightly darker patches but generally keeping a nice light pressure and shading in the direction of the beak. So my particular beak here, I'm actually using a reference photo from Pixabay, which I will link in the description for you in case you want to have a little ganders at what exactly I am drawing. Um, my particular beak is kind of dark, it's, it's very dark on the bottom half of the beak, but there's also these blue tones and there's also some red and brown and yellow tones throughout my beak as well. So in the darkest areas, what I'm actually doing is going in with some dark indigo and then I'm going to go over with some brown. So I'm going to layer those two colours together because they produce a really unique and interesting dark tone rather than going in and using like a flat colour like dark sepia or a flat black. So layering some blues and browns on top of one another will help to create a nice interesting dark tone rather than a flat tone. And what I'm doing as well, I'm using my Holbein soft white pencil to do a little bit of blending because you want to get a really nice smooth area. So once you've added in your base colours and you've kind of shaded a little bit lightly, depending on the paper that you use, you may have a little bit of that paper grain showing through. So in order to eliminate that, I like to go in with a Holbein soft white pencil and it just helps to smooth and flatten everything out. It does kind of desaturate the colours a little bit, but then I just go back over the top with some colours to really hype up the saturation if it's needed. And what you can see I'm doing here is I have gone in, as you can see on the tip of the beak, with some heavy pressure of the dark blue and the brown to create a nice dark, deep, almost black tone. And then on the top half of the beak here you can see that I'm just shading down some colours to try and map in some of the darkest areas. So by adding in those base colours they're going to act as our highlights within the beak and then we are layering and until we get to our darkest colours, just going from light to dark, layering in the darkest areas with the darker colours as you proceed through your layers and you can see that you can develop some darker tones and then your base layers will act as these highlights or the lighter areas within your beak. So throughout this process I am using a really soft touch, nice light layers and I'm often using the pencil on the side as well to try and get as light a touch as possible and I'm just using multiple layers of these darker colours over the top of one another to try and produce this really nice dark tone. So I'm getting as dark as I can by going in and using some of this these lighter layers and then where I can't necessarily get as dark as I want to with using a light pressure then it's time to go in with a harder pressure on the pencil and really get that pencil into the grain of the paper. I'm also using the Holbein soft white to smooth out areas so it eliminates that grain of the paper and it makes it look really nice and smooth. You'll see on the bottom half of the beak, I use a slightly different technique, so I'm kind of showing you two techniques here. Um, on the bottom half of the beak, I go in and use a blending pen or a blender pen uh, to actually smooth everything out whereas on the top half of the beak here I've used the white pencil method of smoothing everything out so this particular method is a little bit more difficult because you have to kind of build soft layers and blend with the white uh, compared to the lower half of the beak but I think I prefer the top half of the beak the texture and everything that is produced by using this method so that's why I'm, I'm showing this one first. 
So once I've developed some of the darker areas within the beak, as I said, going in with those light layers and then a harder pressure where I can't get any darker with those light layers, then it's time to work on adding some texture and working on some of the colours and everything that you can see within the highlights of the beak. So I'm actually adding down some yellow, a um, very, very light layer of yellow to mine, a little bit of earth green and some red as well to kind of create a, a kind of brownie orange tone. This works really well for the highlight of the beak because my particular parrot does have red and orange and green feathers in it so I'm kind of mimicking those colours in the beak, beak to tie all of the colour scheme together for this particular parrot. And as you can see I am just using my sharp darker pencil so coming towards the darker layers here and adding in some lines again following the curvature of the beak you kind of want to get the appearance of like a nail. So if you look at your nails, um, sometimes you'll notice that your nails have like slight grooves or ever like the little bit bumped or raised in a few areas. Uh, but more often than not, they kind of have like very, very tiny fine lines running down the length of them. And that's exactly the same as what you're going to need to do for the beak here. So just adding in some of those lines, kind of following the flow of the beak. You want to leave a few sort of lighter areas where the highlight, where the light source is really reflecting off the beak as well. As you can see, mine's like through the middle of that top section there. Um, and then I've kind of gone darker either side of that. So it makes the beak look as if it's very concave, like flowing round. So that's pretty much the technique for working on the top half of the beak, as I said, using a white pencil blending method. So on the lower half of the beak here, what I'm doing, instead of going in with a lighter layer, um, and going straight in with my darker layer, so I'm going in with some brown and then adding in some dark indigo, again to kind of try and create that really unique dark colour, rather than going in with straight black or dark sepia or something like that. So I'm just layering the brown, then the blue, and then adding some more brown and blue and layering it up. Then I'm going to go in and blend with a blender pen. So the one that I'm using for this is the Finesse Blender Pen. I really love this for using with polychromos pencils. Blends out really, really nicely. And I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to check that one out for yourself. And when I'm blending, I'm making sure that, again, I follow the curvature of the beak and any kind of areas of detail that I can see in that bottom half of the beak. I'm making sure that I blend in that direction rather than kind of blending in an opposite direction because that will make a difference when it comes to adding in the details and adding in any final layers you might be able to see some of that wrong direction blending uh, when you come to adding in your final layers you can kind of see a little bit of that underneath sometimes so it's always a good idea to blend in the direction of your texture as you can see once I've blended that out it creates a really really nice dark tone it's a lot darker than the top half of the beak already and I've only had to use four layers rather than a combination of a lot of light layers so if you are someone that struggles with impatience or perhaps you just don't like to add a lot of layers or you have weak wrist or something then this method is probably going to be better for you and you can use this on the top half of the beak as well just add down fewer layers um, make sure you've got enough pigment on the paper before you go in and blend and then you'll get a really nice dark tone so I'm actually adding in the tongue here as well this method that I'm using for the tongue I've just gone straight in with hard pressure on the darker pencils rather than going in and blending or anything like that just gone straight in with a uh, hard pressure on there and you can get a really nice dark tone but I like to use various methods and layer stuff up because you get a lot more depth the one good thing about blending with the blender pen on this lower half of the beak is that I can go in with lighter colours over the top of these darker colours and they actually show up. Whereas in the top half of the beak it's very difficult to do that if you don't have a very opaque white. So I've actually managed to go in with a warm grey one over the top of these dark areas to add that kind of little hint of highlight along the very edge of the beak where it meets the tongue and yeah I was actually really successful in adding that in. So similar to the top half of the beak, instead of going in with darker colours and adding in any kind of texture, I've actually used that lighter colour and added in some texture on the bottom, which was absolutely really effective and I really like the outcome of this. So the two halves of the beak are fairly similar but also different. So on the top half of the beak we went in with our lighter layers and you've got a lot of dark grooves and texture. Whereas the bottom half of the beak it's very very dark and you've got lighter grooves but you're still kind of using the same technique of following the curvature of each half of the beak to create these grooves. 
So hopefully you can see the importance of actually adding in the details and everything following that curvature of the beak. If we were to go in a slightly different direction, it would really kind of skew the image and make it look like the beak was protruding at a weird angle. So you just always need to make sure that you follow any kind of lines and curvatures to make sure that you kind of get that three-dimensional look exactly spot on. But that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I really hope that you have enjoyed this one and that I've given you a few hints and tips if you are creating your own bird and a little bit stuck on this texture. It can be a little bit difficult um, but depending on what method you use, whether you want to go in and blend with a white pencil or use a blender pen, you can see that both methods are effective. One is just a little bit more time consuming, whereas the other is a little bit quicker, especially if you have dark areas. If you do want to follow along with the full tutorial of this, then the eye area and the skin area I've actually already recorded and some of the feathers as well. It was part of a live draw along session with my club puffin tier over on Patreon and on my website. So if you want to follow along and finish or complete your own parrot like this along with a whole bunch of other tutorials then make sure that you click the link in the description and sign up. It's the beginning of the month so it's a perfect time to sign up. There's a whole bunch of other tutorials as well and we are scheduled to do two live draw along sessions for December and it's going to be uh, a quite a special little subject. I'm really looking forward to December's content over on Patreon so if you want to check it out click the link in the description below. But otherwise thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye!